have still. So I'll wait for a minute. Okay. Okay, so let me make an introduction. Uh, the previous week, I've uh, in the second hour, in the third hour on Wednesday, I introduced you this and I've uh, said that there are new slides, you can download them. And after the uh, Wednesday's uh, lecture, actually I put this on the website, maybe some of you may have realized it. If you go to the syllabus, there's a previous exam question on this week's subject and it, this is actually the question. And this is a correct answer. I mean, this is one of your friends, actually. Her name was, what was her name? I don't remember, apparently. But she had a hundred from this exam and she's working for Thai now. Doing a, so she was a good student, I'm sure. Most of you will be able to do this uh, as good as she did. So uh, after this, uh, today's, today's two hours, we have a office hour, as you all know. So let's just say these questions about this question or other questions to the office hour. And let me start the uh, actual subject of week two. Please. Okay, I hear some voices and you wouldn't mind if I mute them all. Okay, yes, I'm trying to mute you guys. Okay, thank you. So, uh, let me begin or let me just open the chat window on the other screen so that I will see if some of you is asking something. Okay, so this is week two. E3 microprocessors. Um, uh, well, yes, we'll talk about uh, the microcontroller, but before that, I'll make an introduction about the basic concepts. So this is the, this week's outline. We'll uh, remember digital concepts, digital design concepts, byte, hex, word. I mentioned them a bit in the previous week, but the previous week was like an introduction, like a trailer. So uh, I'll just talk about them more properly this week, but I'm still uh, expecting you to just uh, know these by heart. So just, I'm, I'm just asking you to do some exercises at home so that you'll be, uh, so, I mean, you'll be easy on these subjects, okay? So I'm going to introduce you the processor that we're going to use. And you're going to talk about a bit of the architecture of the microprocessor. As you remember, I said in the previous week, there are certain components about the microprocessor, which is basically, for example, the registers. We'll talk about the registers of this specific um, uh, microprocessor, microcontroller we use. Okay, let's begin. Guys, so we'll be using binary numbers. In mathematics, and uh, actually in digital e electronics, because binary numbers are being used by digital design and hardware engineers more than it's being used in mathematics. It's a binary number, uh, it's a base two number, actually. It's nothing more than that. It's base two in mathematics. And uh, in base two, actually, you can have two different numbers, zero and one, because in base 10, you have 10 numbers, zero to nine. So in base two, you have two numbers, it's zero and one. That's why everything is being represented by zero and one. And if you look at the history of it, it's very simple. When people, um, I mean, the first pioneer, pioneering uh, electronics engineers found, uh, I mean, they invented the, for example, uh, transistors, flip flops, they realized that they can keep the uh, voltage level of these transistors either zero or five. And if you do something, something or something like zero or five, it is like a binary system, zero or one. And they realized that they could create a logic out of it. And that logic has become today's most complicated computers and AI actually. Okay, and in this, Base two, we will refer to each digit as a bit. Okay, so if it is a three digit number like this, one, zero, one, it has three bits, nothing more. So what does this mean? Actually, this means that if you want to represent this number, you will need three bits, three cells. So actually these bits are flip flops in the digital circuit. So you need three flip flops to represent a three digit binary number. And how do we calculate it? I tried to show you this in the previous week, but you've got the bits. And if this is base two, it is basically starting with two to the zero and two to the seven. Since the first bit is multiplied by 
um, two to the zero, so it's base to the power of something. The first digit is called the zeroth digit. So we start in a binary uh, a representation of digital electronics. We count the digits starting from zero, guys, not one. So we don't say this is the first digit. I mean, we can't say that because it's the first one from the right. I mean, intuitively as a human being, I can say this. However, actually this is bit zero. This is bit one. If I say bit five, it means that I'm counting from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Because bit five is being multiplied by two base to the power of five. That's why. And how do you calculate this? So very basic calculation here. If you've got one, zero, zero, one, it is uh, one times two to the three, zero times two to the two, zero times two to the one, and one times two to the zero, which is eight plus one, nine. In time, you'll get used to it, okay? And, uh, sorry. Um, when you using the annotations on how to call them, imagine you have a string of bits. This is a 16-bit number, sorry. Sometimes my mouse does this. You have a 16-bit number. If you count, there are 16 bits here. I will always count the rightmost digit, the least significant digit, because it's the least significant. It is two to the zero. If I change this bit, the number will change only by one. But if I change the most significant bit, uh, the number will change dramatically, depending on the type of, uh, I mean, uh, number representation used. If this is an integer, it's, if it is calculated this way, so this will be changing by an amount of 2 to the 15. So that's why this is called the most significant, this is called the least significant bit. So when I say least significant, you'll immediately get that it is the rightmost bit. When I say most significant bit, you'll immediately get that it's the leftmost bit. And if I say the second most significant bit, you will immediately get that it is uh, just next to the one who is on the right, uh, most right-hand side. Okay, and we also said that, uh, we also talked about the definition of a nibble. Nibble is four bits together, right? So if you have four bits together, we call them nibble. If you have eight bits together, we call them bytes. Actually, one byte is eight bits together. So let's make a thought experiment. If a nibble is four bits together, just forget the other part. So it is one, zero, one, one. What is the biggest, the largest number you can create using a nibble? It is one, 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 right? If you calculate, it is 15. Yes. For nibbles, get values between zero to 15, so Oz Warren is going to ask a question, I guess, right? No, I just, <laughs> the microphone started. Unwillingly. Okay, I continue. Okay, um, uh, so if a nibble is four bits long, the numbers you can create with a nibble is from zero to 15. So let me just try to show you this. Um, let me just open my own video. Okay, so, so guys, let me try to do this. So this is a nibble, right? This is the smallest number I can create with a nibble. So it is zero in base 10, of course. And this is the largest number I can create with a nibble. It is, if you calculate, 15. And actually, how many different numbers you can create with a nibble? 16 different numbers. Actually, they are the digits of the hexadecimals. I'll come to it in a, a couple of slides. Okay. So uh, maybe just, maybe you couldn't see it. I just stop the share. I'll show this one to you guys. So this is it. Okay, let me start the share again. Okay. So guys, the bytes is, on the other hand, 8 bits long. And the word by definition is 16 bits long. Very, very simple definitions. Nothing you should just have to know about. I just, it's very easy to understand, straightforward. There are not tricks, okay? Okay, so let me continue. So a nibble has four bits. And the hexadecimal digit, hexadecimal digits are base 16, they also have four bits. So each nibble has a corresponding hex actually. So in this case, this is a nibble. So the hexadecimal representation is zero. So it's one, one. After 10, it becomes a bit uh, complicated because after 10, the decimal numbers start to become two digits. However, in hexadecimals, we have only one digit because 
the value 10 is still smaller than 60, the base. If the value is smaller than the base, we have one digit, right? So it's A, B, C, D. So whenever I have this, I'm going to actually represent this nibble using this hex. Okay. In mathematics, basically hexadecimal is base 16. So hexadecimal equals base 16. Nothing tricky about it. When I say hexadecimal, immediately understand that it is base 16. Why? Because it uses 16 distinct symbols. So uh, usually, I mean, most often it says, but it's not most often, it's usually this. I've never seen something uh, just contradicting this. Symbols 0 to 9 and A to F are being used. So I'm, what I'm expecting you to do is just have this table in mind. I mean, if you work on it, you'll just get used to it. Don't worry about it. Okay, then, so another representation. So nibble is a hex. They are the same size. size. And hexadecimals are represented with a 0x at start. Because I, I mean, imagine there's a number 9. Well, it looks like decimal, right? But it can be hexadecimal. So if you see only a 9, then it is 9 in decimals. But if you see 0 cross 9, it means this is a 9, but it's a hexadecimal 9. It will make a difference, OK? Because when it's two digits, it makes a difference. For example, let me just show you. Just stop the share. Uh, guys, uh, can you answer me, one of you? When I do this, you see my screen full screen, right? You see the. Uh, I'm. Evet, hocam. Bütün ekranda görünüyor. Okay. So uh, the best, the best example is this. For example, ten. So what is this number? If it is a decimal, it's ten, and there is no doubt about it. However, if this is an hexadecimal ten, because this is, let me show you. 10 to the 0 plus 10 to the 1. So it is basically 10 to the 1 plus 0, 10. Yes, 10 equals 10, we have just found out. However, if this is a hexadecimal, because I have this here, it is, you can see this, right? Let me show you, sorry. So this is 16 to the 1 plus 0. This is 16. So actually, this is 16 in decimals. So be careful, guys, be careful. When you see a number, be careful with this sign. Okay, so let me share the screen again. Yes, up to share. Okay, so uh, this is how we just transform the numbers. Uh, this is something you already know, but I'm trying to remind you guys. So it's basic conversations I've been done this way. So converting from hexadecimals to decimals or binary to decimals is a bit easier. The other way around, uh, you will have to do just some calculations. I mean. Imagine you're trying to represent, you have 32 or 33 in this, like this, like this here. You want to represent it in binary, but what you're going to do is you're going to factorize it with the factors of two to the X. So it is like representing a number. Let me just show you this again as well. Stop share. Imagine you want to represent a number, base from a base number here, base two. For example, let me just write a number, 19, right? Well, actually representing a number in a base is actually factorizing it using the powers of that base. So I'm trying to find something like 2 to the, uh, uh, a times 2 to the uh, 1 to the uh, n plus b times 2 to the n minus 1, kind of. I'm trying to find a representation like this. So if you can find it, 19 is plus two plus one, right? Two to the four, two to the one, two to the zero. Which means bit zero is one, bit one is one, bit four is one. So bit zero is one, bit one is one, bit two, I don't have it, zero, bit three, zero, bit four is one. So it's very simple. I mean, you should get used to it. And it is not different when you do, do this in hexadecimals, right? I'll try to do it in hexadecimals. So if you do this in hexadecimals, Okay, so it is like 19 is equal to a times 16 to the 1 plus b times 16 to the 0. So it is 1 times 16 plus 3 times 1. So it is bit 0 is 3 and bit 1 
is one. So this is hexadecimal one t. Could everybody follow? Okay. You'll get used to it. I'm just don't worry. Okay. You get used to do, doing this in time, but you definitely have to do this. I mean, if you do want to uh, be a hardware engineer or just embedded programmer, these are just so natural to embedded programmers and hardware engineers. Steps. Okay, so I'll continue with sign notations. Uh, well, the examples I've shown you up to now are about positive integers. I've never mentioned about something about being negative or positive, uh, positive right? If they were all just definitely positive. But if you want to represent a number using a sign, for example, a negative number, you need a sign. But don't forget that in computer systems, we don't have specific uh, transistors that show signs or other operands. We only have flip-flops. So we have zeros and ones. So if you're going to represent something, whatever it is, you, you, you will need to use bits. So what we do this in this case is, imagine you have an eight bit number, which means you have eight cells, eight flip flops. In that case, you assign one of the bits to indicate the sign. And in this specific notation called sign magnitude, I'm sure Barbaros has shown you this, you get the most significant bit and use this for sign notation. So if it is zero, it means positive. If it is one, it means negative. So what is the magnitude of the number? What is the value, the absolute value of the number? Quite simple, guys. You use the rest of the bits. You calculate the magnitude. Very simple, how to calculate magnitude? It's zero times two to the zero, one times two to the one, zero, zero. So this is, I guess, 18. Uh, yes, it's 18. So this is plus 18 because this is zero. And this is minus 18 because this is minus. Very simple annotation, not being used widely, but this is usually the case. Any questions about sign magnitude? No questions. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, I continue. Okay. So I continue. And the other notation is called the sign uh, tools complement. Tools complement is a bit complicated guys well actually if you have a positive number nothing changes you have the number so uh, again the most significant bit this bit uh, designates the sign so if it is zero it's a positive number if it is one it's a negative number okay and if it's positive you just get the magnitude however if this bit is one to calculate the magnitude you do an operation what you do is you complement the bits and add one. For example, in tools complement, this is how you represent minus 13, guys. This is how you represent minus 13. So you look at this number, I mean, before seeing this part, and before I told you that this is minus 13, this is a negative number in tools complement. I'm, I'm telling you, this is a tools complement number. And you immediately say, uh, uh, this must be a negative number, okay? So what is it? Negative what? Negative 10, negative 16, negative 13. What you do is you complement all the bits and add one. And you read the magnitude. So 1 plus 4 plus 8, 13. That's why this number becomes minus 13. That's how you calculate it. Any questions? I guess not. It's pretty simple. So, don't forget that to make the reverse operation. Imagine you want to find out, but in this case, uh, the example was we had a two's complement binary number. You're trying to understand what that number is exactly in decimals. Okay, but imagine you have a decimal number. I'm telling you minus 19. How to do it? You will do the reverse operation. So you'll get, you'll write 19 in positive 19 in binary. You subtract one because that's the reverse operation and complement the bits you get the number. Okay. Something that you already know, but had to remember. Can you tell me? Yes, I can ask you. I have to ask you 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 to ask you. Please ask. Can you tell me if you have to ask you 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 to
Your friend is asking, how will I know that this is a, a negative number? Or what is the notation? Somebody will always tell, okay? Or we will be telling somebody. So it is designated beforehand, okay? So there is no way to understand it. If you look at this number, this could be a number, positive number, very high, or it could be a negative number if the notation is two's complement. Somebody will tell, okay? So it's based on assumption. It's kind of difficult to understand this, but I hope you get my answer, okay? Anladım hocam. Somebody will tell. So it's, there's no way, because both could be true. So somebody will tell. I will be telling in the question. Or in the system you design, you'll be assuming that it is two's complement and negative. You'll be doing your operations accordingly. Okay? But right. They could be both. Any other questions? Good. Okay, the nice thing about two's complement notation is subtraction is identical to adding. You just have uh, negative numbers and positive numbers. For example, you have a, in uh, magnitude bits, for example, this was the uh, signed magnitude, the other notation. You want to sum these numbers. Just if you immediately sum these numbers, you won't get zero, right? Because, I mean, you will have to just find out that this is negative and subtraction. You have to do subtraction. So you cannot add positive numbers and negative numbers directly in signed magnitude. However, in two's complement, you can. Let me show you an example of what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, oh, 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 as minus 13. So, this is plus 13, guys. It's the 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. In two's complement, this is minus 13, right? I, sorry, plus 13, I'm sorry. And I've got 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And in two, two's complement, this is minus 13. I know that these are two's complement, guys. I know this. Somebody told me. So knowing that they are two's complement, I'm adding these two numbers. If you add them, it's zero, right? Let's add them. So this will be the first time you are doing an addition in base two. One plus one, what is it? It is two, but there are no twos in base two. It is one zero, right? One plus one in binary is one zero, all right? So this is one zero. I write the first digit and there's a carry to the other digit. So this is carry one here. One plus one, again, one zero, but there's a carry. One plus one zero, there's a carry. One plus one zero, there's a carry. Carry, 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 carry. So this is zero, guys, as you can see. I don't have this bit. I sum them up and they become zero. That's nice thing about two's complement. It's easy to handle negative and positive numbers. Any questions about this specific example? Hocam, sondaki carry'e ne oldu? Well, uh, it's also right. actually a good question. Uh, why? Because um, uh, nothing happened to it. I mean, uh, but in this specific example, the actual summation made zero, but that carry is being saved to somewhere because that carry might be imported for some operations. So actually, what happened is, in this mathematical example, it was lost. However, in the microprocessor, there will be a carry bit keeping that information because it can be important. So what happened to that carry uh, can have different uh, answers. In this mathematical question, we don't have the uh, digit line, so it is dead. We don't have it, it's just zero. But in the microprocessor, actually there is a bit called carry bit and it's being saved there because in certain situations, we will need that information. I hope this answers your question. Guys, you are asking good, uh, please. Şey soracaktım. Şimdi burada 8 bit kullanmışlar ya. Hı hı. 4 bitle 13'ü yazsak e, eksisini aldığımızda değişim olur mu yoksa fark etmez mi? Uh, you are asking to write 13 using 4 bits in which notation? Signed magnitude, two's complement or no sign? Which one? 13'ü yazdık, eksisini alacağız. Ama okay, hani... okay. Good question. Let me explain. I'll have to just stop share again. Good question. Your friend is asking, actually, she's trying to ask, how can I write minus 13 using a 4-bit system? The answer is you can't. Actually, the number of bits you have limits the numbers you can represent. 
For example, I've got a four-bit number. This is the largest number in an unsigned notation. Unsigned, because there are no signs, means all the numbers are positive. So this is the largest number I can write here. However, if I've got a signed notation, that means that I am using this sign always to represent negativeness or positiveness. The absolute value will be used and designated by this three bits. So actually you have three bits for the uh, absolute value and you won't be able to represent 30. So let's try to write it. What is the largest number you can represent in a two's complement system using four bits? It is this, right? Which is plus seven. Okay. And let me tell you, what is the smallest number you can represent using four bits? It is this. And what is this number? You can see it, right? What is this number? How did we do this? We just took the complement. Uh, this was not the smallest number, guys. I'm really sorry. This is not the smallest number. This is, this is the largest number. This is unsigned. This is two's complement. Okay, sorry. This is actually the smallest number. What is it? Do you remember how did we do it? So what we did was we have taken the complements of everything. Let's take the complement one, one, one. Add one. This is eight, right? So this number should be minus eight. So actually using four bits and the two's complement, the range of numbers you can represent is between minus eight and plus seven. You can never represent 13 or minus 13 using four bits. You will need at least five bits. Okay. Uh, was this an answer to your question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, share the screen. Share. Share basmak yerine leave meeting'e basabilirim arkadaşlar. Böyle bir anda ders falan biterse hiç şaşırmayın. Ben leave meeting'e basmışım diyebilirim. Okay. Um, şöyle. Um, okay, so. This was about representing signed and unsigned numbers. What about decimal numbers? I mean, not all numbers are integers. And when we do scientific operations, we have to deal with, uh, I mean, decimal numbers like 1.2, 3.5. Actually, to understand this, you should remember how we represented decimal numbers in base notations. Uh, in decimal numbers, to, I'm going to just start, stop the share again. So, uh, how did we do this? How did we do this? So, let's remember how did we do decimal numbers in base notations. So, in base notations, for example, it is no different than decimals because decimals is base 10 and base 2 is the same mathematics, guys. So basically what you do is very simple. You have that point, that radix point. So I'm going to write a base 10 number, which is 1.9, right? Or just 20 pound point, 91, let's say, to make it more complex. So in base 10, this is nine to the zero. This is nine to, uh, 10 to the, I'm sorry, 10 to the zero, 10 to the one. This is 10 to the, so one zero minus one. And this is 10 to the minus two, right? So if you just simply write, 2 plus 10 plus 1 times, sorry, 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 9 times and 1 times, you get this number. This is how you calculate. So this must be the same when you deal with two uh, base 2 numbers. So I'm just going to write a number here, base 2. So this is 1, 0, 1, dot being here. 0, 1, 1. So this is basically 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the minus 2 plus 2 to the minus 3. So it is 5 point. This is 1 over 4. This is 1 over 8. So 5 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8. So I guess it's something like... Uh, something like this, right? This is an unsigned notation. Imagine this, if this is two's complement, if this is zero, it becomes plus. So it's simple as this. So 
about this, uh, let me just do the share screen again. Okay, so uh, when you deal with these uh, decimal numbers in base two, you should be careful about, careful about the radix point, where the radix point is. Actually, there are two ways you can use this radix point, the decimal point, that dot. Is, it the, is the location of the dot fixed? For example, you have eight bit fields, which means to represent your numbers, you have eight flip flops. So where you will assume the radix point to be will designate the numbers you can represent, right? Because imagine if you put dot just at the middle, you have four bits to represent um, points uh, uh, at the right of the dot. So you'll be representing points two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, and two to the three. And similarly, if the dot is here, two to the minus one, minus two, minus three, uh, three minus, uh, minus four. So where you put the dot also designates how you represent your numbers. So there are two notations, actually, fixed point and floating point. In the fixed point notation, the dot is decided, guys. You know where to put the dot. In floating point, the dot point changes, guys. It's a bit complicated. We won't cover this in this course. In the next semester's course, in embedded systems, uh, I talk about this. I definitely define how floating points are represented in, uh, uh, in computers and in MATLAB, in C, and in all the computers, OK? So we'll deal with fixed point numbers for this course. For this, this course is a bit introductory in that level. OK, uh, I continue. So as I said, floating point arithmetic is the dot point changes so that if the dot point moves here, the numbers that you can put to the right hand side of the dot will have more bits. So you'll be able to represent very small numbers. And if you just move the dot to the right hand side to here, the numbers you, you can represent can be very large in magnitude. So that by controlling the position of the dot, you decide how come a big number you're representing or how accurate the number you're representing. So for scientific operations, we need floating numbers. Okay, that's the idea. Now, this was all about the introduction that I'm going to make regarding binary numbers, guys. Any questions? Hocam, benim bir önceki sayfada var da sorum. Lütfen. Şey, bu orada eksi iki üzeri üç yazmışlar da yanlış mı yazılmış yoksa? Uh, here is that here? Şey, e, soldaki integer partın birinci hocam. Ben bulan. Yes, yeah, this must be wrong, guys. This must be wrong. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, maybe no, no, no. Yeah, actually, yeah, no, actually, if this is a two's complement number, if this is one, putting that okay. minus eight will make the same calculation, guys. It's a bit strange. Actually, it's a bit confusing. I didn't want to say this to you. It's a trick you use in eight bits. So just forget this. Uh, forget this. Don't worry about this. What I'm okay. trying to say is, say is, if this is unsigned, you just put plus. Okay. If this is a signed number, don't consider this as a part of the number and do your cal calculations according to this rule. Okay. okay. So if it is two's complement, putting this like this will make the same thing. Actually, that's a trick. But I didn't want to confuse you. Don't you don't have to learn this because this is and this is enough for you. Okay. So hope and answer to your question. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Oh. Uh, yeni konuya geçmeden önce arkadaşlar ben bir ufak mola vereceğim. Hem de kaydetsin. Uh, i̇sterseniz şöyle yapalım. 10 geçe buluşalım. Uygun mudur? Uygun mudur hocam. Tamam, 10 geçe görüşmek üzere. Kapatıyorum. Kapatamadım. And meeting.